Hi guys, welcome! In this two-part series, we'll dive into the auto-attack build for RuneMaster in RO 2.0. The critical auto-attack build of RuneMaster is still one of the best endgame builds that can dish out insane amounts of damage, both in PvE and PvP. And in the first video for this series, we'll discuss in detail the recommended stats, skills, runes, equipment, cards, and tips for increasing the overall power of this build for PvE. Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be able to use your crit type auto attack rune master character effectively for farming, boss hunt, and weekly instances. Alright, without further ado, let's begin. Crit type classes and ROM Eternal Love have proven to be very expensive to build, and the critical type auto attack build of rune masters is no exception to that. This is because the calculation of rune masters auto attack damage uses both physical and magic attack, as well as magic defense. So you really need to invest in these 3 stats in your Adventure Handbook, Guild Prayer, and Guild Blessings to improve your damage. Then you must focus on boosting these stats through damage modifiers from your runes, equipment, cards, and enchantment. Up next, let's discuss important stats for this build. First, prioritize putting points on Int as it is a stat that increases your magic attack, MDef, and max SP. It is actually more beneficial than strength in terms of increasing your auto attack damage since sink or swim converts each point of M def to 1.5 magic attack and then enchant blade attaches the magic attack into attack in the auto attack damage calculation. Thus magic attack will be affected by both your magic attack percentage and attack percentage multipliers. Then abyss contract adds your current SP as attack in the damage calculation. Next, Strength is a primary stat that increases melee physical attack, and thus it directly boosts your auto attack damage. Next, we have Luck, which increases your chance of landing a critical hit on a target, wherein every 3 luck increases crit rate by 1. Normally in PvE, monsters have low crit resist so aim for at least 120 crit. Luck can also boost your DPS with the Aura Blade passive skill, and also if you will use the following equipment set of Viagun Star card as Garment card, Spring Platter for Headwear, and Gold Foil Fox Mask for Face. Your auto attacks on monsters are guaranteed to crit but at the cost of having a base crit damage of 125% instead of 150%. After that, put points on Agi, which is just enough to achieve the max attack speed of 480%. You can actually opt to leave it to zero as it is easy to attain 480% attack speed with just Awakening Potion, Agi Meal, and One Hand Quicken. However, Agi may also increase your DPS with Aura Blade Passive which grants 3 points of true damage for every 5 points of Agi and also if you will use the following equipment set. Having at least 500 Flea is a must to get a full attack percent bonus from Vink Magic Bracelet. Agi can increase your auto attack damage percentage if equipped with Dragonfly Star as Garment card, Doppelganger Star as Weapon card, and Fluffy as Tail item. Next we have Dex, which reduces skill cast time wherein every 30 Dex reduces the variable cast time by 1 second. Abyss Arrival, Death Binding, and Asphyxia all have 4 second VCT, so you need to have a total of 120 Dex to instacast these skills. And lastly, Vit increases your max HP, death, and HP region which are vital for survivability. Vit also increases attack and magic attack due to the Call of Justice passive skill and its AC rune, so it's good for both offensive and defensive stats. Do take note that there's no recommended fixed stat distribution as it will depend on a variety of factors such as your equipment and bonus stat in the handbook. It's important that you understand first what these stats do, then tweak your character's stat based on your preference. Aside from increasing your raw stats, you should also boost the following attributes. First is crit damage, which determines how much damage will be increased when your auto attacks deal critical hit. Initially, players have 150% base crit damage. Second, we have auto attack damage, melee damage, and physical damage increase which increases your final damage output. Third is Penetration, which lowers the enemy's damage reduction stat in the damage calculation. There is no cap to pen so it's possible to lower the enemy's damage reduction below zero and thus raise your damage. Fourth is Movement Speed, to be able to reach your target faster, especially during boss hunts. And last are the Race, Size, Element, and Boss Damage modifiers, which increase your damage output depending on the monster you are fighting. 
Bear in mind that the critical hits already ignore the defense and flee of your target, and thus increasing ignore death and hit are not essential for the auto-attack build. The key to building a critical auto-attack rune master is your ability to balance these stats in order to achieve optimal damage output. Up next, let's discuss recommended skills to get. For the Swordsman first drop skills, you should assign points on Level 10 Sword Mastery for higher auto attack power, Level 5 Bash as prerequisite for Level 1 Magnum Break, which grants high burst attack, induces your weapon with fire element, and quickly removes the effect of Elemental Converter, Level 5 Taunt for canceling some monster skills, Level 10 Endure to prevent flinching and for higher M Def, and Level 9 Increased Recuperative Power for faster Ace Pre Regen. For the ninth second job, the most important skills to get are Level 10 One Hand Quicken for boosting attack speed Level 10 Aura Blade for increasing your auto attack's damage Level 5 Cavalry Combat to be able to attack while mounted Level 5 Cavalry Mastery for 20% more damage to large sized monsters while mounted And Level 5 Heart of Steel which is a good defensive skill that can help you survive one hit kill skills such as the Explosion of Crystal in Tanatsu's Tower First Floor. As for the remaining 5 points, you may opt to max out Taunt for lower penalty. For the Lord Knight Advanced Second Job, you can allocate your skill points on Level 10 Lord's Aura for providing the whole party with 30% damage increase, Level 5 Concentration, and Level 10 Head Crush for additional physical attack, Level 5 Call of Justice, which grants 5 attack and 1.6 magic attack for every 5 points of it, and level 10 Sword Parry, which has 30% to 50% chance of blocking damage from your target. Wow. Once you've reached a job breakthrough, you can allocate the extra skill points on the following skills. First, get level 3 HP Light as a prerequisite for level 1 Frenzy, which fills your HP to 100% but clears your SP to 0. You will then enter a Frenzy state for 20 seconds, wherein your max HP, movement speed, and flee will drastically increase in exchange for 90% reduction in your death and M death. Next, get level 21 Head Quicken for raising your auto attack power. Level 20 Aura Blade for higher true damage and attack provided by the Aesir runes. And level 15 Head Crush for higher attack and longer buff duration. As for the remaining 1 point, you can use it to level up increased recuperative power from 9 to 10. For the third job skills of Rune Knight, the most important skills to get are Level 10 Enchant Blade, which adds your magic attack to the auto attack damage calculation wherein 125% of your magic attack will be used as attack, which will further be increased by attack percentage multipliers. This is the reason why it is more important to boost magic attack for this build. Next, get level 10 Sink or Swim, which reduces your M Def to 0 and then converts each point of M Def loss to 1.5 points of magic attack, while also reducing 10% of your max HP and increasing magic attack by 5%. The magic attack you'll get from this buff can be increased by your magic attack multipliers and then will be used as attack due to the enchant plate buff. Then we have level 5 rune mastery for increased chance of crafting rune stones. Level 10 rune mastery which grants 10 int and 100% additional duration of rune stones. Level 10 power of rune for increasing your magic attack every time you use a rune. Level 5 dragon training for additional 10% attack speed when riding a dragon mount or any mount that grants 50% additional movement speed and level 10 Dragon's Protection for added elemental damage when switching to fire or water. As for the last 20 points, you can only allot it on Force Focus, which increases your max HP by up to 10,000. Once you've changed into Rune Master 4th job, you can prioritize allocating your time quicksand on the following skills. First is level 10 Dimension Slash for longer auto attack range. Its enhancement skill grants 15% chance to immobilize the target for 1 second. Next is level 5 Abyss Contract, which increases auto attack damage based on current SP. However, each auto attack you deal will reduce your current SP by 1%, so you may opt to leave it out when just farming. Then get level 5 Dark Frenzy, which allows you to accumulate frenzy points when doing auto attacks, hence increasing your dark element damage. You can also gain frenzy when receiving attacks due to this enhancement skill. After that, we have level 10 Death Awakens, which turns you into Demon Rays, and thus the enemy's damage human damage modifiers will be useless against you. When in demon form, you'll receive 20% pen and 30% max HP, as well as plus 15% damage to demi human race with this enhancement skill. You'll be able to use the Death Awakens without consuming Frenzy if you've activated the third line of the Dark Awakening Star Rune. 
Then we have level 5 Death Binding, which allows you to bind with an enemy target for 10 seconds wherein your lost HP will be shared with the enemy. After that, get level 5 Asphyxia, which reduces your HP to 1 but you become invulnerable from all damage for 8 seconds. Its enhancement skill allows you to deal 40% more damage to enemies in death binding state. You can also do life steal on enemies using Asphyxia with the Death Cage Star Rune. And lastly, we have level 5 Abyss Arrival, which lets you cast an array for additional source of damage. Its enhancement skill increases your dark damage by 15% when inside the array. Now that we understand the related skills, let's discuss next the skill setup when fighting boss monsters and clearing instances. First, put the following essential buffs in Prepare for Elite. One Hand Quicken, Head Crush, Concentration, Lord's Aura, Enchant Blade, Endure, and Sword Parry. Make sure also to consume all your alloys, food buffs, and rune stones. After casting Prepare for Elite, use Sink or Swim to ensure that MDef bonus from Endure will be converted to Magic Attack, then use Death Awakens. After that, you can start Auto Battle with just Auto Attack on your Auto Skill slot. For survivability, you can manually cast defensive skills such as Heart of Steel, Asphyxia, Death Binding, and Frenzy. Make sure to observe your buffs carefully and manually recast them when needed. Up next, let's discuss the most important runes to get. For Acer Monument, these are the essential runes and notes that can help increase your overall damage output. For Advanced Runes, prioritize getting the following skill runes. First, the most important Advanced Rune for the Auto Attack RM build is the Fortitude Mark Class S Rune with high values on the first line. This will increase your crit damage and movement speed for every active skill buff that you currently have, and this also includes the buffs from party members. As an example, if you have 10 active skill buffs and max crit damage on this rune, you'll gain additional 100% crit damage. Activating the second line effect is also useful in Tanatos Tower to ensure that your self buffs won't be removed. Second is the Anger Reflux Class S rune with high value on the first line to allow you to recast Frenzy more rapidly. A high value on the second line will also help in improving your DPS as your current SP is also considered in the auto attack damage calculation with the Abyss Contract Passive skill. Third is the Darkness Awakening Star Rune with the third line activated as it allows you to cast a Death Awakens anytime without a need to consume Frenzy points. Having a high value on the first line increases its duration by up to 20 seconds and a second line Fear Effect may help control mobs summoned by MVPs. Fourth is a Death Cage Star Rune with high value on the second line for high lifesteal effect during Asphyxia. This will let you fill up your HP again. As for the last two runes, you may use any of the following based on personal preference. First option is Joint Beat Class S rune with high value on the first line to have a higher chance to automatically cast level 10 Joint Beat when doing auto attacks. However, some prefer not to use it in PvE since the damage is low and it can steal the Lex Eterna buff. Second option is a Steel Guardian Class A rune to be able to cast the Heart of Steel more frequently and for more resistance to abnormal status during Heart of Steel. Third option is Swift Riding Class B rune for faster movement and attack speed when riding. And the last option is Power Strike Class B rune for increasing your attack every time a rune stone is used and for extending the rune stone's duration. As for the attribute runes, prioritize upgrading the following to increase your damage. Up next, let's dive into the suggested equipment set and cards. For weapon, without a doubt, the best in slot would be a plus 15 heavens as it significantly boosts your auto attack damage as well as your attack, crit, and crit damage. It is of holy element so you'll deal more damage to dark and undead element monsters. However, when fighting against holy monsters such as Archangeling and Valkyrie Rat Freezy, using heavens will not be effective. In this case, you may bring a dark fire sword as alternate weapon. In fact, dark fire sword deals more damage into Natos Tower first to third floor compared to heavens since the MVPs don't have dark damage reduction. For weapon enchantment, aim for a high PDI or crit damage stat and sharp or sharp blade for 4th enchant. 
For weapon cards, it's cheaper and more efficient to use any race, size, element, or boss damage modifier cards and just switch depending on the monster you're up against. But if you have budget for MVP cards, then you may use the following. The most important would be a Baphomet card due to the ability to trigger splash damage to nearby units, especially the summoned mobs of MVPs. Next is Albaran Star card for a chance to double your damage with Lex a turn buff. If you do solo boss hunts, then you may prefer having Goblin Leader Star for a lifesteal effect, which helps in survivability during long fights. As for the last option, you can use Doppelganger Star if you're going Agi build. For offhand, you may equip either a Giant Shield or a Vink Magic Bracelet. If you want to only focus on boss hunts and weekly instances, then I suggest getting a High Refined Giant Shield as it significantly boosts your damage against all boss monsters. The only problem is that it will not be helpful for farming and in PvP. A more versatile alternative for both PvE and PvP is a high refined Vink Magic Bracelet as it increases your attack, pen, crit, and flea. You just need to ensure that you have enough Agi to get at least 500 flea, which is a prerequisite for Vink's attack percent bonus. For offhand enchantment, aim for a high PDI, a crit damage stat, and armor breaking for fourth enchant. For offhand cards, it's cheaper and more efficient to use any damage modifier cards and just switch depending on the monster you are fighting. But if you don't want to switch cards, then just choose among Anubis Star, Meryl Rowlands, or Alice Star cards. For armor, the best in slot would be a high refined tyrannical armor as it grants substantial increase in crit, agi, mdef, crit damage, and attack percentage. For armor enchantment, aim for high PDI or crit damage stat and shard for fourth enchant. For armor cards, having two leaders demeanor card would be the best in slot so that Lord's Aura will grant additional 10% attack to you and the whole party. You may inlay a Ronin Warriors card for more crit and crit damage or a heart card for more damage to boss monsters. For garment, the best in slot is a high refined cloud undershirt since it grants a considerable boost to your luck, flea, attack percentage, crit damage, and auto attack damage. For Garment Enchantment, just aim for a high PDI or crit damage stat. For Garment cards, you may use any of the following cards. But if you have high budget, I suggest getting either a Dragonfly Star card for more auto attack damage or a Yegon Star card for more crit rate and crit damage. Dragonfly Star card would synergize best with Vink Magic Bracelet and Doppelganger Star card as this set requires high agi whereas Yegon Star card would provide more crit and crit damage if you allot more stat points on luck. For footgear, the options are St. Mary's Cloth Shoes for huge boost in attack percentage and magic attack percentage, or Bristle Shoes for more crit damage, or Little Fairy Slippers for more melee physical damage. Among the three, I think a plus 15 St. Mary's Cloth Shoes would provide the highest damage increase due to the additional 16% attack and magic attack. For footgear enchantment, just aim for a high PDI or crit damage stat. For footgear cards, you can inlay a rainbow fall card for more attack, familiar star card for more magic attack, or flute player card for a slight boost in crit, agi, dex, and movement speed. But if you have high budget, get a time holder star card for higher damage, or a moonlight flower star card for mobility. For accessory, magic attack accessories with sharp fort enchant are ideal in PvE such as Tibur's Hand and Kraken's Eye. An alternative is Fading Tear which has a small chance to increase your crit damage by 100%. However, magic attack accessories would still provide constant DPS. For enchantment, just aim for a high PDI or crit damage stat and sharp play for fourth enchant. For accessory cards, just use any element or race damage modifier cards depending on the monster you are fighting. But if you don't want to switch cards, then you may use any of the following cards. For headgears, there's a lot of options available for both gacha and non-gacha. I'll be showing my recommendations for each slot and just choose depending on which stat you're lacking. For the head, you may use Spring Platter for higher crit and crit damage, plus 6 Dawn Flute or a high refined Eye of Flame Spirit for boosting your penetration, plus 10 Helmet of Orc Hero for 10% melee physical damage, plus 6 Bashful Moments or a high refined White Knight Helm for damage to boss monsters. For enchantment, aim for a high crit damage stat and zeal for fourth enchant. For headwear cards, you may use any of the following for increasing damage. For face item, you may use the Illusory Light Mirror, Juggling Queen, Alchemy Beak, High Refined Monocle, or Angel Spirit. The Gold Foil Fox Mask is good for early game when you still have low crit. 
for enchantment, just aim for a high PDI or crit damage stat. For mouth item, you may use My Heart Shape from this month's Headwear Gotcha, Dream of Silk, Cloud Pillow Dream for MVP, Butterfly Breath for MVP, Moonhound's Tail, or Abyss Whisper. For enchantment, aim for a high crit damage stat and zeal for fourth enchant. For back item, you may use the Love Goddess, Winter Elf Hotel, One Eye Captain for farming to restore SP, Dark Moonshine for MVP, Baby Owl, or the Ancient One Staff. For enchantment, aim for sharp fourth enchant. And lastly, for the tail item, you may use Fluffy, Jade-dyed Little White Dragon, Wind Song Shepherd, Thunder Sun, a High Refined Summer Banana Split, or Meteor. For enchantment, aim for a high PDI stat and sharp plate for fourth enchant. Lastly, here are some tips for increasing the power of your Rune Master. First, for pets, you may either use pets that can resurrect, such as Abun and Osiris or pets that can taunt enemies such as Orc Wire and Orc Baby. There are also pets that can help increase your damage, such as the following. Second, for alloys and food buffs, you may consume Meal B or Gold Hot Bento Box for increasing all 6 attributes. Rapid Attack Alloy for plus 400 attack, Precision Stone for correcting size penalty of swords against large size, 6 Satisfied Fees for boosting attack and penetration, and the Yellow and Light Blue Rune Stones for boosting strength, crit damage, and M def. Third, boost your raw stats further with Guild Blessing and Guild Prayers. For Guild Blessing, you need to boost your Combat Blessing, Vice Blessing, and M def Blessing. And then for Praying Cards, prioritize Pen, Crit Damage, Magic Attack, and Attack for Attack Cards, M def Percent for Def Cards, and Holy and Dark Damage for Element Cards. Fourth, for Oracle Mirror, you may choose to extract the attack attributes of any of the following gears depending on the stat you're lacking. A high refined combustible knife for boosting physical penetration, a high refined slash for increasing your auto attack damage, a high refined heartbreaker for more crit and crit damage, a high refined bilgusarm for higher damage to boss monsters, or a high refined oath book page 2 for a huge increase in magic attack. As for the defense attribute extraction, a high refined card would be the most ideal option due to the huge increase in mdef percent it gives. Fifth for Ancient Relics, the best option for Blue Relics is Light Saint Ring. Yes. But for Purple Relics, you can just choose depending on your playstyle in PvP. And lastly, invest in lots of Attack, Magic Attack, and MDef Unlock and Deposit Rewards in your Adventure Handbook. You should also invest in these cards and headgears which provide essential stat unlock and deposit rewards. Unlocking the following multi-jobs will also provide additional attributes. Alright, so far we discussed the stats, skills, runes, equipment, cards, and tips to help improve the damage of your rune master's auto attacks. Hope this video has helped you in your journey in the world of Ragnarok Eternal Love. Please leave a comment below on what job class guide you want to see next. Alright, that's it for this video guys. Don't forget to like if you enjoyed watching this guide. If you're new here, I would love for you to consider subscribing Hitting the red subscribe button down below. I would love to have you back. Thank you for watching and see you in our next episode.